welcome back to episode 7 of Sleeping Beauty. Today I'm going to do a job which many of you might know how to do anyway, but um, I hadn't changed the oil uh, in the car with a cartridge filter for a long time, so um, it was a bit of a refresher course for me. So happy watching. There's only one job that's worse than changing the oil. You can see the sump plug just there. Uh, the worst job is changing the filter. These canister filters uh, have a um, an element inside and there's washers and whatnot so I'll try and take this off in a second and because the oil filter faces downwards that's going to be full of oil so this is where it sort of gets a bit more messy but we'll see how we go so I've undone the sump nut which is up here somewhere and it's actually a very big bolt. It's a 30 millimeter. Well, it's probably the Imperial version of 30 millimeter. Uh, now I haven't been able to get the engine oil hot, obviously. So um, I'm just doing the best I can. The last bit's sort of dripping out now. I'll have a close inspection of the oil. It's pretty gluggy, but um, I just want to see if there's any metal bits in there, and then I'll um, I'll tackle the filter, which is up under here. It's the old canister type. I don't really want to pull the sump off. And I got some Jaguar advice and they said, well, if you're not going to pull the sump off, you're better off not putting diesel, diesel and oil down the, um, down the engine into the sump, because I think some people do that, uh, because that might open the can of worm. Now this oil has been in the car, just sitting there for mm, somewhere between 12 and 15 years. Got to be a bit careful not to drop the phone in it because that would be a bit embarrassing. All right, let's see how we go with this. Okay, this is where it gets a bit messy. Okay. So sometimes the canister just falls off and then you get covered in oil and start swearing and kissing. I'm not too sure how much oil these hold, I should have looked. Um, just got to make sure the O-ring and stuff is out, which I'll check in a minute. I'm just going to have a look at um, what I've got in the oil filter box. So I bought this from the local sort of Jaguar guy. It comes from S&G Barrett. Local guy is the agent for them. So it's quite interesting actually on the box it says, um, you know, blah, 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 part number. And it says Origin Hong Kong. Now I don't know if that's where it's made probably is uh or that's where they have a um dist distribution outlet but um let's see what's in here i love opening boxes it's like christmas okay so there's the filter cartridge and that's got a seal or a rubber thing on both ends so it looks unidirectional i.e you can put it in the same way and there's a couple of o-rings and that's about it so i'll have to just get the book out and see which o-ring goes where this haynes manual is largely hopeless i've got a um a proper workshop manual uh, on the computer it's got pages and pages and pages about um how to pull the engine to bits but i hope i never have to do that the indexes on these are pretty hopeless too. So, oh, here we are. Right, so there's... So there's the relevant page. This manual is for the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. So I haven't changed a cartridge filter for ages. So hopefully this Haynes manual is correct. And number 13. 
says ceiling ring. Where is it? Ceiling ring. So that's probably what that is. 12 clamping plate. Well, no, that's good. There is no number six. So presumably it's a disc like up the top. So I've got the housing soaking in um, detergent and stuff and um, we'll see um, what that looks like in a minute. So I've cleaned the oil filter housing and that sort of looks okay. It's all sort of spick and span inside. Bit of detergent, bit of a squirt with the hose. Looks great. So I'm just comparing what I've got What I should have. So I've got the casing. I've got the big bolt that goes up through, and I've got the spring, and I've got the O ring. Now there's a second bigger O ring, I don't know what that does. The one that came out was about this thickness. So um, we'll have to see what happens. So we put the spring first, and then we put the plate in, and the boss has got to go upwards so it fits in the filter. This goes in there like that. And we'll just stick my torch down there to see if I can see whether that boss is centered. Which it is. Then I'll go and lie under the car and curse for a little while. So we've got the filter in. Okay, so hopefully you can see the groove where the o-ring goes. So I've just got a bit of cloth and so I'll fit that o-ring up in here. It's a bit of a pain to do one-handed. So the oil filter's back on, uh, the sump plug's back in, so make sure you don't forget to put that back in. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is fill the engine up. Uh, I just had a look on the internet, uh, my hands are too disgusting to get the manual out. Uh, it looks like it's about 8 litres of, um, of oil, so it's quite a lot of oil actually. So I've, um, I just went to the shop and got some of this new long oil, I have to admit I've never been that fussy about what sort of oil I use. This is a semi-synthetic uh, 15W40s, probably be right. Uh, I've never had a problem with any of the oils I've ever used. So what I do try and do is um, just put a lot of towels and sheets and stuff around when I fill the oil up because it's just an awful, awful horrible job. And the oil can go everywhere. And always does. See what the dipstick's doing here. <clears throat> okay, of course the oil's all nice and clean now, so it's a bit hard to see on the dipstick, but um, it looks like it's just above maximum. Now, the oil filter housing will probably hold oh, something like half a litre or something like that. So when the engine starts up for the first time, the filter casing will fill up with oil and that level should drop back down to something approximating the correct level. That looks pretty good to me. There must be about eight litres in there, seven and a half litres or something. And the dipstick only goes in one way, which is a pain. I think it goes in one way. Okay, that's back in properly. Alright, so that's how you change the oil and the filter in the Mark II Jaguar. Once I get the engine started, and just let it run for a little while, I'll be doing that whole rigmarole all over again. So changing the filter and the oil with nice brand new oil again. And hopefully um, everything will be tickety-boo. So I'll just get underneath and make sure that the filter is not leaking, but I don't know if that filter is above the oil level in the, the sump or not. 
So now comes the laborious job of um, cleaning everything up. So hopefully you got something out of that episode about changing the oil and the filter. It does take longer to clean up than it does to do the actual job, but um, that's just the way things are. So we'll see you next time, episode 8. Bye-bye.